What's up outdoorsman, Greg here, and today we're going on a hike. We're gonna go on a little hike today. Uh, oftentimes get questions about, you know, what trees work well for saddle hunting, what trees don't work well for saddle hunting, what do you look for in a tree, can you hunt a tree that leans, uh, should you avoid trees that lean? What about trees that lean sideways? What, what do those types of trees work? So we're gonna go over all the different types of trees uh, that I like to hunt, why I like to hunt them, which ones work best, which ones I try to avoid. I'm gonna try to cover all that today so you know exactly what type of tree you should be looking for. At least it'll give you a, a place to start when you're transitioning into a saddle. First tree, this is a monster. This tree, is gonna be really hard to hunt on a mobile hunt because it's gonna be really hard to get climbing straps for climbing the tree around it. Now, if I was gonna hunt a tree this big, what I would like to do is identify that in the preseason, and then if legal, I would come in and I would use screw in steps or I would drill holes for bolts and I would climb this tree that way. Uh, that's gonna be the safest and the easiest way to climb a tree this big. The benefit of hunting a tree this big is that even at hunting height, the tree's this big around. So it totally blocks my entire outline. I can really hide from the deer. That is a, a really nice benefit. The downside, again, is it's hard to climb. Uh, it's also harder to shoot 360 degrees around the tree with a pivot style platform. A ring style platform might work a little bit better uh, on a tree this big or a combination of a pivot style platform like the Predator platform or some, some other pivot style platform, one you made yourself or whatever kind. Maybe if you put a couple of screw in steps or a, a strap on step around the tree, that might work for you as well. So there's lots of ways to attack this, but there's some pros and cons to hunting from a big tree like this. This is a classic leaner. I would say it's probably got 10 to 15 degrees of lean. You can hunt this tree. Uh, there's nothing wrong with hunting a leaner. Just depending on how much it actually leans, it can be an uncomfortable hunt. Now, if this tree is in the right spot, if maybe it's the only tree in the, the trail that you need to be on, or the scrape or the rub or the, the, the travel corridor that you need to be on, you can absolutely hunt this tree. Just like I said, if it's really a severe lean, might be uncomfortable. Um, this one's not too bad. I like to hunt on the top side of the lean. So I would set up on this side. Now, some guys like to hunt the backside of the lean. There's really no wrong way, it's just about comfort. With my style platform, the pivot style platform, I find that I can just get be a little bit more comfortable on the top side of the lean. The thing you have to worry about on a leaning tree is you're gonna fight gravity if you go to move left or right, either the top side or the bottom side of the tree. Whichever side of the lean you're on, you're gonna fight gravity. So it's something to keep in mind. It might be difficult to maneuver for a shot, so put that, you know, put that in your mind, in the back of your mind as you're setting up. Know which side you wanna be on and where you expect to get your shot because a leaner is gonna present some obstacles for getting uh, 360 degree shooting. Even though you can do it, something to think about. This is one of my absolute favorite kind of trees. It's got a split up there in the trunk. I love to get in splits. Now, ideally is a tree that goes up and splits into three or four trunks and they're each about this big around at hunting height, about a basketball. That's kind of the size tree that I look for. I look for about a basketball size. That's the reference that I keep in my head just because I find it more comfortable. Some guys like smaller trees, some guys like bigger trees. And I hunt all sizes of trees, it's just the perfect tree for me is about this big at hunting height. And if a tree goes up and splits into three or four trunks and I can get in the middle of them about this big, that's perfect. So this tree is, is, is a great example of that. It splits at about 15 feet high, so I would get nice and high up into the trunk and get into that split and hide myself. I love a split trunk tree. This is a really common kind of tree that I find myself hunting from. Um, this one and then uh, one with just a few limbs, but this one is basically what I call a telephone pole. This would work great for a climbing tree stand as well, but it's perfectly straight, no limbs until about where I'd wanna be, about 25 feet. That's perfect. I'd, I'd like to get up there, hide myself in those limbs. Uh, there's no limbs to cut or to move around, so I'm safe. So it's just a really, a really fast tree to climb. So I like these, these trees. The downside to them is that there's no cover. This particular one has some cover at hunting height, so that's nice, but a lot of times, like in a pine tree or something, you just don't have a lot of cover. So that's a downside of a telephone pole style tree. 
um, but they're easy to climb and they're usually very, very quick to climb. This is another setup that I love, not necessarily because of this tree, but because of what's behind it. So this tree is pretty much a telephone pole and it's pretty small, but I love that I have another tree right behind it, not terribly far, only about three feet behind it, and it's got tons of cover. So I can climb this tree, I don't have to get crazy high or I don't have to worry about concealment too much because I have all of this back cover. So I love a tree that I can sandwich myself in between. Now, that's a beautiful part about saddle hunting is that I set up on the back side of the tree. So in a tree stand, if I were to take advantage of the cover of this tree, uh, it wouldn't be quite as useful because my tree stand would be on this side of the tree and I would be sticking out just a little bit more. With a saddle, I can get behind this tree and hide myself really, really well in all that foliage up there and that is great concealment for me. Now, most often, this is the type of tree that I'm gonna choose. Uh, it's about the right height. When I get up to hunting height, it's gonna be about basketball size. It's got multiple limbs uh, for concealment. Not a lot. I don't, like, I don't like climbing trees that have a bunch of limbs just because it takes, uh, it takes a while to pass your lineman belt appropriately around each limb. But a few limbs is good for, for uh, concealment. So this one's got three or four limbs and at hunting height, there's still some limbs and foliage up there. I love it for concealment. It's the right height. It's, or excuse me, it's the right width. It's, uh, it's pretty straight. So this is the, the kind of the quintessential saddle hunting tree for me. Again, uh, the things that I care most about is that it's about a basketball size around at hunting height and it's got some good concealment and it's relatively straight. If it were leaning a little left or right, again, it wouldn't be a problem, but anytime I can hunt a straight tree, it's just a little easier. So the important thing to remember is there's no bad tree. Some are just more challenging to hunt than others. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you learned a little something. Uh, check out some of my hunting and fishing videos. I've got a lot of saddle hunting content on my channel. I appreciate you guys watching and remember to get outdoors.